An instant classic in NBA playoff history went down last night inside Madison Square Garden. Game number five in the opening round series out in the Eastern Conference between the New York Knicks and the Philadelphia 76ers. The Knicks, after winning game number four in Philadelphia, return home to the Mecca with an opportunity to win this playoff series in game number five, booked as a four and a half point home favorite inside MSG. And it looked, Donnie, like they would do that and maybe even cover in the final 30 seconds of regulation. But then Tyrese Maxey had other ideas. First, the four-point play that made it 96-94 with under 28 ticks remaining in regulation. And then Josh Hart only makes one of two free throws, which allows Tyrese Maxey, I guess, to pull up from the logo inside MSG, bury a triple that tied the game at 97, all sending us to overtime. And in OT, Philadelphia pulls away behind a 46-point performance from Tyrese Maxey. The Sixers keep their season alive and this series going 112-106, winning outright as a four-and-a-half-point underdog inside the Garden. Yeah, tough scene if you had the Knicks who win this series in five. If you had the Knicks money line as part of a parlay yesterday, heck, even if you had the Knicks straight line yesterday around that four and a half number. And also, hey, man, you hit the nail on the head. Congratulations on your under. Not necessarily when it goes to overtime and you get another 24 points on the board to lift that up to 112 to 106. But this is a night where Tyrese Maxey is going to remember and certainly 76ers fans. They were dead to rights in this game. And so many times we watch the Philadelphia 76ers take a first quarter lead 26 to 17. Then what happens? Joel Embiid takes a break, and then you have the Knicks 32-17 to in the second quarter, and away you go. The interesting part about the series overall is Joel Embiid isn't 100% healthy, but yet still in a game he dropped 50 points, but also had the triple-double yesterday. But the most important thing is he was a plus 14 last night. So if I am Nick Nurse, even if Joel Embiid, I apparently, Ben, can't walk up the court, just leave him down the other yeah. end, because as long as he's on the court, they are a plus and by a great margin at that point. But the focus is going to turn on to the two small goals Cards yesterday in Tyrese Maxey. Now, granted, Maxey's not all that small. He's a little bit bigger than Brunson. Those two dueled left and right, 46 points and 40 points. What a game in the garden that the Sixers had no business winning until, Ben, as you said, a four-point play from Tyrese Maxey, followed by a low-low uh. three-point attempt. You're supposed to miss at least one of those there, and then the game is a wrap. He made both and then continued to come back in overtime. So impressed by the Philadelphia 76ers, dead to rights, and now you have the game Thursday that starts at 9 o'clock. Don't get me started. Let me just relax here on a Wednesday before I get angry at the start times in Philadelphia. It makes absolutely no sense. The start times for the doubleheader tomorrow, first in Indianapolis, central time zone game is earlier than the one in Philly. But again, we'll save that for later on in the show. DRS, Philly probably had no business extending this series and keeping its season alive if it were not for Tyrese Maxey. The total going over 204 also had no business going over unless it was Tyrese Maxey. I bet it the over when it was at 203 yesterday for the over under during our hours here on the early line. Sometimes you are gifted a winning wager. But when you look at how this game played out, Joel Embiid doing everything he can, but it is clear he is nowhere close to 100% healthy. 19 points, 16 boards, 10 dimes. Did have nine turnovers, but again, that plus minus of plus 14. It's the interesting dichotomy for Philadelphia. Joel Embiid like, can't be on the floor all that much, but has to be on the floor because without him, they are not able to compete and keep that winning margin. Tyrese Maxey will go down in the record books with a 46-point performance. But on the other side for New York DRS, it's Jalen Brunson, and it's strictly Jalen Brunson. 40 points yesterday, finished with six assists, 15 of 32 from the floor. I said yesterday, I would love a field goal attempts prop for Jalen Brunson, and I would just blind bet the over. He has taken at least 26 shots in all five games in this series, but you do have to wonder, as we forecast game number six tomorrow night in Philadelphia, after this overtime thriller and a 51-minute performance out of Jalen Brunson, just how much do the Knicks have left in the tank? I guess you could say the same thing for Philadelphia. 
Yeah, and no, it's going to be something to watch. But the, the fascinating part about Brunson, again, he's not a 6'8 shooting guard that's like, I can post anybody up and get my shot off whenever I want to. You see how much action he has on the court. And also, you're talking about a game where, yes, it did go to overtime. He had two guys play over 50 minutes for the New York Knicks yesterday. Actually, excuse me, three guys play over 50 minutes, which include Ananobi. But the one thing that you love about Brunson is he gets to his spot. You hear that consistently throughout the telecast. Brunson likes to get to his spots. Like, why don't you stop him from getting to his spot? Good luck with doing that. That's what he's been doing all yeah. season long for the Knicks. But it's one of those that you're right about. We've seen Brunson not play well in Madison Square Garden and the Knicks still able to get their victories. He played extremely well yesterday, 15 of 32 from the floor for that 40 total points. We'll see what he can do in Philadelphia, but also keep in mind, we got the bad vibes early on yesterday, and as we were handicapping while we're going through the morning, you saw Kelly Oubre, sickness, hold questionable for the night, missed his shoot-around. Joel Embiid, migraine, and a plethora of other injuries that he has. It just had the feeling that the Sixers would get wiped out, and you saw that second quarter. It was like, well, the Sixers gave it their best effort, Ben, in the first quarter. It just wasn't enough. They're getting yeah. a race now at this point. Credit the Sixers for coming back, no excuses yesterday, and also needing miracles at the end to win, and they got them here. So moving forward, the Sixers got to feel really good about it. If you do go back to game number seven, hey, guys, we just yeah. won a game. Game five of Madison Square Garden. We can do it again. Great night last night for the Sixers backers. Tough night for the Knicks because, quite honestly, when they took that six-point lead with 30 seconds to go, for they're sure. already moving on. They're ready to party in the streets out there last night. Didn't happen. Do those ghosts haunt the New York Knicks as yeah. they move forward to game number six? Again, look at the series price. The Knickerbockers a hefty favorite to win outright. Minus 385. But Philly's a three-and-a-half-point favorite for tomorrow night back inside the Wells Fargo Center, which would, if you follow the odds, then force a Game 7 back inside Madison Square Garden. The Knicks have been at least a four-point favorite in all three games in MSG, four, four-and-a-half-point spread by close last night. They would probably be, based on these odds, around a three-and-a-half-point, four-point favorite for that decisive Game number 7 but the odds that you see in the series correct score market don't necessarily match up with a minus 385 price for New York to win this series outright. It is anybody's guess in anybody's series for game number six tomorrow in Philly. There will be a game six in Indianapolis. We'll tell you why next. Live right here on this Wednesday morning on the early line on Sports Grid, but we continue our recap and reaction to a Tuesday night in the association. Three games, a triple header of NBA playoff action. Two clinching spots last night that neither came to fruition to close out a series. Philadelphia keeps its season and its series against the New York Knicks afloat with a victory in game number five. Indiana was on the road as a four-point favorite in Milwaukee inside the Pfizer Forum because no Giannis, no Damian Lillard for the Bucks on the other side, but no issue for Milwaukee. All five starters in a balanced effort score in double figures. It was Milwaukee pulling away in the second quarter and in the third. The Bucks win big by 23. 115 92 over Indiana. Milwaukee wins outright as a four point underdog, sending us to a game number six tomorrow night in Indy. And Donnie, it becomes even more interesting not just a game five win for Milwaukee to keep its season afloat, but pregame reports prior to game five last night inside the Pfizer Forum. Giannis Antetokounmpo is ramping up, trying to return from that calf injury. Yeah, if you're the Pacers, you let one get away last night. I don't know what they thought coming into it, because anytime you have two superstars not playing, you're up 3-1 to one in the series. You figure that Milwaukee's just going to get put to sleep, and they didn't last night. But you have to give some credit to the Milwaukee Bucks. And this, again, Ben, wasn't a 93-92 final. It was 115-92 to 92 oh. after being down eight points in the first quarter. Then you had a 30-17 to 17 second quarter led by the Bucks here. Then you had a 34-19 third quarter. It was almost like the Pacers came into this game going, yeah, we just expect the Bucks to lay down. We'll take that early lead and everything's going to be okay and oh yeah if we do lose this game we'll still be on our home court in game number six you can't do that man so when you have these no. chances to close out opponents particularly when they're down you have to do it here now you're just giving that team life because we don't know the extent of the injuries here on both Giannis and or Lillard but I assume that we're now looking closer and closer at Giannis coming back and who knows if Dame is going to return but if you get one of those back on the court that's such a big boon here to the Milwaukee Bucks just to see those guys in uniform for the other support 
four players. But you got to give credit. Bobby Portis and Middleton both scored 29 points in this game. A runaway victory for the Bucs. That's a bad look for the Pacers. Yeah. But let's see if they just had all their marbles put into the bowl here in game number six. Going, we'll handle our business. Don't let this go to a game seven because you might have Dame and also Giannis back for that game. And the Pacers like, man, we were up three to one without those guys and we couldn't close them out. Tough scene here. You should have did it last night. We'll look at the series situation up next. And if you follow the odds, it's really not that dismal of a picture for Indiana based on the score last night and even going to a game six. But I'm not sure I agree with the odds. Normally, it's the first game after a team loses a superstar or two where they can make those rapid fire adjustments before the other side has time to figure out what is going on. In game four, though, in Indianapolis, it was the Pacers winning big. And the story of this series has been pretty easy to follow. When Indiana lives up to their name and paces up as the Pacers, good things happen. Games two, three, four. Indiana wins outright. Total goes over. The Pacers score at least 120. Last night, the Pacers scored only 92. Even with Milwaukee scoring 115, a total of 216 and a half stays under. And when you look at what the Bucs did last night, they call him Big Game BP for a reason. Bobby Portis, 29-point double-double. Chris Middleton, 29-point double-double. It was balanced out of the Bucs, and it forces a game six. Milwaukee now this year, 9-10 and 10 against the spread as an underdog, winning outright in plenty of those nine covers. I was really impressed because this is what that, you know, the depth and Doc Rivers, who we still think has, this is crazy too, because we'll bring this up in a little bit. You take a look at Doc Rivers on the sideline. Would have been better for them to lose in game number five without their superstar. So Doc like, hey, I had no choice here. But you know what? That's a good out clause here. Let's see Doc get his two superstars back and then get beaten game six or game seven. I would feel much better about that. But you have to give credit to the Milwaukee Bucks not going up in flames here. They played well. Every single starter in their lineup last night scored in double digits. And you also got Gallinari off the bench, 21 minutes at a plus 15, and also Pat Connaughton, 32 minutes off the bench, and a plus 21. Most B players play better on their home court. We'll see if this can translate to game number six, because the Pacers, you better win that one, or now it's time to start the panic. So let's examine game number six and the series situation on the other side of the break. Indiana is a seven and a half point favorite for tomorrow night back inside Gamebridge Fieldhouse in downtown Indy. But is it as easy as the odds would expect? We'll tell you next here on the early line. To game number six we go in Indianapolis tomorrow night between the Pacers and the Bucks. We are not sure the status of Giannis Antetokounmpo nor Damian Lillard, but pregame reports prior to game number five last night in Milwaukee actually state DRS that Giannis is closer to a return than even Dame. The odds makers not expecting either to be out there if you forecast the spread for tomorrow night's game number six and what the series situation is now that we head back to a sixth game in Indy. The Pacers still a hefty favorite to win this series outright, minus 900. In the series correct score market, Indiana to win in six, four games to two is minus 370. Indiana to make that a reality, up three games to two, heading to game number six tomorrow night at home. It's minus 320 on the money line, a seven and a half point spread. So despite a dismal effort last night in Milwaukee, despite the Bucks not having Dame or Giannis, the odds makers still expect the Pacers to win rather handily tomorrow night back home in Indy. What say you? They really should, and all the pressure is going to be on them. But also, let's keep in mind, let's just say the Bucks do get Giannis back. The one thing we don't know, Ben, when Giannis does come back is how effective he's going to be with that camp injury. Number two, when Giannis does come back, you can't say like, well, man, they played down the stretch. He would, they were 17-2 and two overall and heading into the playoffs hot. No, they weren't. They were playing bad basketball for a good majority yeah. of the second half of the season, or particularly just under Doc Rivers. So I do expect a game six victory for the Pacers here. But again, if you weren't able to handle your business last night, and I do get back to the point, it wasn't a close game. You got routed, which means you gave all the confidence in the world to those role players on the Bucks that they can do this performance again, whether it's home and or away. But I do think if you're the Pacers, 
kitchen sink game. You got to throw everything at the box because if you don't win that one, you're probably going to lose game seven. But just because Giannis might be coming back, I don't say that's a terrible thing for the Pacers because, again, what we saw to Giannis down the stretch wasn't that great with the Bucs when he was healthy to begin with here. They should easily dispatch of the Bucs in game six. But then again, they should have easily done that last night, and particularly being up close to double digits by the end of that first quarter yesterday. For sure. Listen, it's very easy for me to look at this game. Giannis or not, Dame or not for Milwaukee. If the Pacers just want to win outright, total has to go over 215 and a half. It would be the lowest total of this series. And again, all three wins for Indiana. The game has gone over. The Pacers have scored at least 120. Sure, that includes game number three in the overtime victory in Indianapolis before the weekend got started. But still, Game has to go over. Now we go to game number five last night in Cleveland, where it did go over as well between the Cavaliers and the Magic. In fact, it was one of the highest scoring games we have seen for both teams as both teams get to the century mark in a single game for the first time in the five games so far in this set. Cleveland gets over the century mark for the first time in this series as well. The Cavs win 104-103 at home. All five games in this series, the home team has been victorious. But for the first time, Donnie, the home team does not win by double digits and does not cover that pregame number. The Cavs were a a five-and-a-half point pregame favorite. Orlando does cover that. Huge defensive play by Evan Mobley. Under 10 seconds remaining, stuffing Franz Wagner at the rim, allowing the Cavaliers to hold on. They win by one because Paolo Bancaro hit his 39th point of the night, his final three as time expired to make it look a little bit closer than it truly was in the final seconds. But regardless, Cleveland takes the 3-2 series lead. And it's crazy to believe that you have this game and you want to take advantage of it because you're home, because being up three games to two or two games left is a decided advantage, and you see that in the overall series price. But having said that, this was a series where Cleveland at home, games one and game two, easily dispatched of Orlando. You flip the tables, you go down to Orlando, and Cleveland didn't even show up as if it's like, ah, we got home court advantage, we'll just win our home games, and so be it. Now you get to that game last night and you say to yourself, well, yeah, it's big that Cleveland won, but why do I have myself coming away from this basketball game feeling even better about the Orlando Magic even though they lost? It's almost like you're saying the momentum did translate over. Not enough for the victory, but they played well down the stretch at times. They just weren't able to close the door. Because for me, if I'm saying, okay, zigzag theory, now it's time for Orlando to go back home and win that game. That's technically what's supposed to happen. They'll be favored to do so. But I got a feeling, though, does it feel like Orlando wins by like 28 points in the next game on their home court? because Cleveland's like, ah, we got to go back to Orlando. Let's just, you know, we'll see what happens there, and then we'll get back to game seven and win on our home court. So I'm real high on Orlando winning game number six and this game yeah. going to game number seven. But again, you can't play with fire. If you're Cleveland, you want to close the door. Game six on the road, handle your business in Orlando and move on to the next round. But I just feel like, Ben, this is definitely going seven games because – For me, it almost feels like a no-show is coming for the Cavaliers, which absolutely should not happen in the playoffs in a closeout situation. And DRS, to your point, Orlando won game number three by 38. They pulled away in the second half in game number four to win by 23. That's an average margin of victory for the Magic on its own home floor of 30 and a half points per game Cleveland had won both of their games in the land game one and two prior to last night by at least 10 points last night was the closest game we had seen last night was the first time both teams had scored 100 the Cavs had scored 100 and the losing team scored more than 90 points again Orlando does cover as a five and a half point road underdog and a total that was pretty low at 202 and a half does go over no series odds out in terms of how long this series goes the Cavaliers a hefty favorite to win it outright minus 450 I don't know why there's not a total games or a correct score market available on the FanDuel Sportsbook I would love one I would love for them to post this series goes seven because I would bet that and you also follow the odds the Magic a three and a half point home favorite for Friday night in game number six I would agree with Donnie I think Orlando wins rather comfortably in game number six the Cavs had not scored more than 90 points in Orlando I'm going to lean with a Cavaliers team total under for Friday but that's a few days away 
Yeah, it sounds like a Friday, you know, hey, Donnie, where are you going here on your best bet of the night? I think I've already found it here in the Orlando Magic. <laughs> I'm cheering on the Cavaliers to close out that series because you're right. It should be a close game, but I haven't seen closeness here in games on the road in three and four here down in Orlando for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I love that number at three and a half because I do think there's a good chance that we find out exactly those same scores, as you said, close to a 30-point advantage over those two games by the Magic. Why should that change up here? We haven't seen anything that's going to break that. And also, a little bit lucky that the Cavaliers even won the game last night in Cleveland here. So I really like Orlando on Friday night. And yes, we are going to get a game seven, which is great. We'll all participate. We'll join in. We'll see what happens in that one. But I do expect seven games here, Ben. The reigning NBA Rookie of the Year, Paolo Bancaro. Huge night last night in the land. Yeah, 39 night. points, eight boards. Donovan Mitchell, good on the other side. Not efficient, nine of 23 from the floor, but a team-high 28 points. Again, Evan Mobley, who had two blocks, the one in the final 10 seconds against Franz Wagner. Really the game-sealing defensive stand. So now we look at the Eastern Conference. Donnie, out west, three of the four teams that will qualify for the second round are already there. OKC, Denver, Minnesota, the top three seeds in the conference. Of course, we have the series tied at two games all between the Mavs and the Clips that heads back to L.A. tonight. In the Eastern Conference, nobody has clinched a spot just yet. Boston is a 14-point home favorite tonight inside TD Garden against Miami to win this series in five. But it is a little bit interesting from the odds outlook then of how this all shapes up for the Eastern Conference title race. Yeah, it is. And you're right about that. And sometimes just on the days that you play, because we expect, you know, the Miami Heat to get closed out tonight by the Boston Celtics. We'll see how that goes through. But also that brings up the point in notion. The Celtics down a man in Porzingis. And if it's any indicator, Ben, we take a look at those calf injuries, which are so tricky. Hey, look, Giannis injured late in the season. That's OK. He'll be back early yep. in the next. Um, we don't know if he's coming back at all. And it's weeks since he's appeared and they need Porzingis rounds one probably not rounds two probably rounds three absolutely you get the point here they need yeah. him back healthy we'll see if they can close the door tonight on the Miami Heat without him the Celtics await the winner of the Magic and Cavaliers series that seems destined to go seven